Hey, welcome back to the Creative Encounter Podcast. I'm your host, Juet Payne. Super excited to have you guys here and excited to have my guy C.W. Allen yes, here sir. in this place. It's going to be a great time. Uh, but before we jump into it, I want to make sure you guys know that this Creative Encounter Podcast is on YouTube. So make sure you go there and subscribe, Creative Encounter Podcast on YouTube and also on Spotify, Apple Podcast, all of the digital platforms as well. So please leave a review on there so that we can reach so many more people with this podcast. But here we go. We're gonna jump in. I'm here with my guy yeah. CW. How you What's doing, up, bro? I'm good, bro. No, no complaints. This way, I got my coffee, so I'm good. Yeah. Now. <laughs> Wait, so look. So before we started, I was getting on CW because I was like, he was drinking his coffee black. Yeah. And I, I don't even drink coffee, so. But I had to call my wife and I told her I was like, man, CW drinking his coffee black. I was like, that sounds nasty, you know. But <laughs> what was the reason that you said it again? <laughs> nah, I had to. You know what? The doctor told me this is about two years ago. Mm-hmm. He was like, you pre diabetic, you got to cut mm-hmm. weight. Mm-hmm. And so I just, you know, I was like, I don't want to do like this crazy diet or mm-hmm. whatever and you know for some people that work that wasn't me yeah. and so I said let me cut little things out of mm-hmm. my diet and then work out and so cream and sugar was like just one of those little things yeah. that I was like could adjust yeah. and I just you know about a year ago I started doing it and I've been hooked there since I've been like oh, okay you yeah. know I can taste bad coffee now yeah. though <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's cool man awesome but yeah man so C.W. Allen he is a, a hip hop artist here yep. in Chicago Illinois uh, but you don't you didn't always live here in Chicago that's right uh, where'd you come from where you yeah originally Cleveland Ohio mm-hmm. go Guardians go Browns mm-hmm. go Cavs oh, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I do love Chicago, but originally Cleveland is my home. It, it has my heart in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. but was born and raised there. I left Cleveland when I was 22 to come mm-hmm. to school here. Wow. Yep. Yeah. I did see that in your bio. So yeah, yeah. since that was after you graduated from college. No, so I um, I came out of high school in 2005, mm-hmm. and um, I, you know I did college throughout high school, mm-hmm. so I had like 30 or so credits. So by the time I got to actual college, mm-hmm. like full time, I was burnt out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I did a year, and uh, in our community college, stopped, just worked mm-hmm. for a couple years, and then when I felt like God was calling me to do ministry work and uh, showing me a little bit of you know my gifts and things like that at mm-hmm. 22, I was like, I think I want to go to college yeah. and study this. So that's when I went off to Chicago to come to study. Oh, okay, there we yeah, go. Yeah. Nice, yeah, nice. Yeah. I think it was, was it Moody? Yeah, I went to Moody Bible Institute, yeah. Yep. So I did cool. communications there, mm-hmm. and then uh, everybody doubles in Bible, so I did communications okay. in Bible. Okay, yeah, there yeah. we go. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, communications in Bible, yep. and now I think you're fully immersed in your creativity and music specifically. Yeah. So do you see a connection from the communication and Bible applications that you learned in college as it relates to this, or is this just completely a brand new uh, <laughs> thing that you're focusing on? Like, for example, like I, I did architecture at UIC. Oh, man. I, yeah, that's what I got my degree in, but I'm not practicing it at mm-hmm. all. You know, I'm just fully, you know, doing the music. Yeah. So does that tie in in any kind of way, the communications? Yeah, so when I started rapping at 19, um, I, I've always been a creative, like mm-hmm. an artist just, just in general. But um, I had to know how to do my own graphic design, so I mm-hmm. learned that. I had to learn how to build my website, mm-hmm. so I would learn Wix and WordPress yeah, yeah, yeah. and all of those, you yeah, know. Exactly. And um, it, it just became a thing out of necessity of of being a creative. Mm-hmm. And so originally I was a mass comm major, but mm-hmm. mass communications is more the history of communications. It's oh. if you want to teach in school. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's news and journalism and things like that. Mm-hmm. That was my thing. I knew mm-hmm. I wanted to rap. Yeah. Like, I knew I wanted to be an artist. I knew I wanted to speak. Yeah. And so I said, when I seen uh, Moody was a Christian college mm-hmm. that allowed you to learn how to read the Bible, mm-hmm. but then also had this communications track, I was like, I'm in. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. and it was dope because it wasn't just like you learned like the history of communications, but you learned mm-hmm. uh, all of the facets of communication. Mm-hmm. So you, their idea was that you were going to go to like a small ministry or uh, somewhere that couldn't afford a team mm-hmm. and you would be the team or you okay. would know how to hire mm-hmm. contractors for the team. Right. So you had to learn graphic design, website mm-hmm. building, writing, print, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like all of the facets, even if you didn't specialize yeah. in one. And so I knew all of them. Yeah. And that's dope because yeah. all of that connects with that's you know, right. Our artistry, you know. I could write a press release as right. well as do my album cover. That's what I'm talking about. And that's awesome because yeah. you want to be able to, in the starting phases especially, be able to have all of those uh, assets be able to already be there. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, yeah. Because you have to put your, your stuff out. You got to put your, your press kit out. You got to do all of that, right. those things. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to be able to uh, show like, hey, man, this looks professional before right. you can get the funding and things to be able exactly. to have someone exactly. else do that. That's awesome. Yeah. So you say you really started... Um, Rapping, I think you said when you were out 19? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So so 
So what was going on in high school? Was it something like you were kind of dabbling a little bit in high school? I was, or I, you started? Yeah. Really into it I, I always wrote poetry and drew, mm-hmm. you know, comic book pictures and things like yeah. that. But I was more of an athlete. Mm-hmm. I did like the I did the morning announcements. So I was a sportscaster yeah. oh, at no our way. school. Yeah. So I knew I was comfortable in front of people. Yeah. And uh so that that was a natural, but it wasn't really until I got challenged to rap at open mic that I kind of mm-hmm. was like, okay, yeah, yeah, I I, yeah, I think I might be dope at this. Uh-huh. Like I would I could freestyle. Yeah. That was no problem. But it was funny because mm-hmm. At my high school, we had a zero tolerance policy for fighting. Okay. We were a blue ribbon school. So it uh-huh. was like, if you fought, mm-hmm. you got kicked out. Wow. And this was like the best high school in Cleveland. Yeah. So um, we didn't see, people weren't fighting. Mm-hmm. People were rap battling. There we go. There it, we go. Even they though found, it was early 2000s, yeah. it, that was like the thing. Like We would get in circles around people who were rapping, yeah. and it was literally like, before the battle rap scene took off, like we that's were dope. watching it happen between yeah, our peers, but I wasn't one of them. Okay. Oh, I really? wasn't okay. a rapper. Okay. Like I enjoy hip hop and I listen to it all the time, yeah. but I never considered myself an artist or even yeah. thought anything about it okay. until that day I freestyled at the open mic and people was like, mm-hmm. yo, you actually pretty nice at this. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And yes, he is pretty nice because you guys, so, <laughs> I'm telling you. So I've had the that. privilege, yes, I've had the privilege to, uh, you know, play with Dub. Uh, and man, we we just had a great time. Like his music is on point. Um, I want to ask you about that for a second. Just going back to you yeah. say you did art and stuff. Yeah. Did you make uh, the album cover for your record Still Dreaming? Did you make that? I didn't make that. Okay. Yeah. I was say, Dude, yeah. You insane. I was no, no, say, I, I could. Yeah. Wow. But I, I just don't have the time yeah, to do it in that capacity. But the person mm-hmm. who did it, she's actually a, a way better mm-hmm. like sketch freehand wow. artist than I am mm-hmm. and so I was like let me hire someone yeah. to do this mm-hmm. and uh so I hire her her name is Josie she's super amazing yeah. but yeah like I I could do a lot of that stuff but like time doesn't permit me to really mm-hmm. dig in and I haven't been practicing those skills in the same way mm-hmm. that I used to so yeah. it's like you got to knock the rust off yeah. and then you can really create it and it's yeah. like with a baby in life, do you mm-hmm. actually have the time to do all of that? You yeah, know, that yeah. Makes sense. yeah. And let, yeah. let's go into that realm for a second. So you said <laughs> with the baby in life and everything. Yeah. So I know you have. Is it your daughter? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Raya. Your wife yeah. and your daughter. Yeah. So yeah. how's she doing? How's the family doing? She good. The baby's great. Uh, she's three. Yeah. She's super tall. She's yeah. in the 90th percentile. So she'll height. be hooping. I, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. It's a possibility. <laughs> right. She might end up being taller than me, bro. Wow. Like it's crazy. That's crazy. But uh, she's a sweet kid. Mm. Great personality. Mm. Like the other day we were in the room, and uh, my wife turned off the lights, mm. and she was like, "Mommy, where Daddy go?" I'm like, "Oh, that's what you're doing. The black jokes already." Uh, <laughs> yes. I'm not gonna tell you the joke. I'm not gonna tell you all the jokes that my my, my boys be doing. Yeah. But it's crazy because you look at them and you be like, "Man, they be acting just like us." Because <laughs> you think back how young we were. Elementary yeah. school, all these jokes we were doing uh, and stuff, and you see the kids, yeah. they're like, oh, no, not again, you know. She's only three, bro, but she's yeah. great personality. We wow. hang out a lot. Mm-hmm. And um, my wife's amazing, too. We've been married 10 years, yeah. together for 12, awesome. so. Man, just, yeah, congratulations, I'm man. in a dope situation. Yeah, yeah. Learning, it, learning yeah. it day by day as it changes yeah. and grows. I love yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Now, this is the thing right here that I think a lot of creatives need to uh, get support or help with this question here, okay? So you and I, we both are fully in our craft. Mm-hmm. We both have families, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. How do you juggle and balance the two? Because you, as the man of your household, mm-hmm. you have to support your family. Yeah. But God is also calling you to do these these mm-hmm. ventures. Um, they may sometimes pull you away at certain times. Yeah. And everything. How do you? It's, it's the whole thing of balance. Like, mm-hmm. how does how does that work or look like in your household? Yeah, that's a great question. There's a few things I put into practice for myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, I, I try to communicate with my wife as much as I mm-hmm. as I can, humanly possible. I mean, like she got all my passwords, so she mm-hmm. literally every night yeah. she goes through my phone, mm-hmm. not to see if I'm cheating or nothing, <laughs> but uh, because she like wants to catch up and make sure that yeah. I don't miss things. And mm-hmm. I'm, she's like, "Oh, I didn't know this happened." I'm love like, it. "Oh, I forgot to tell you." Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Love it. And so, um, you know, she has full access to my life. Mm-hmm. And um and, and honestly, my wife is completely different than I am. Mm. I'm she is a creative, like mm-hmm. she's an amazing photographer. She can yeah, see things no and she can sing. Yeah. 
but my wife is not an artist to the capacity I am okay. where like she she wants to work a nine to five. Mm. She wants to um, you know, get off at a certain time and mm. shut it off. I'm I'm different. Mm-hmm. I'm an artist. I want to like my shows are starting at night. Yeah, yeah. You know, I want to create. I want to yeah. dream and um and I think so. In a lot of ways, we're different in that. Yeah. In that way, she's not a um, entrepreneurial dreamer mm-hmm. personality yeah. by no means. And so I have learned that there's times I just have to dial back mm-hmm. as hard as that is. And I had yeah. to. So dialing back and and knowing when to say no. So like even with shows, like I, you know, I would have before my child, we had a baby right on the cusp of the pandemic. Oh wow. So life changed. Yeah. And then oh, when yeah, I stepped yeah. back into doing art again right. full time and being able to travel, mm-hmm. now you have a three year old. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's so different than when it was just us two, mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. I could just say, I'm gonna go to Poland for two, three weeks yeah. and come back. And mm-hmm. it's cool. Yeah. Now it's like, no, it's a baby now. Yeah. You gotta think about the sitter and and getting them there and um helping my wife, you know, mm-hmm. and, and it's just a different situation. Wow. So it's like I literally went from zero to ten, mm-hmm. a whole different life shift, yeah. and still trying to figure out how to pick up back up where I left off. Right. Post pandemic. So um you know, I think just we are learning as we go, but I, I had to be more selective with shows. Like mm-hmm. I don't, I don't just take a lot of stuff yeah. um, anymore. And you know, like if I'm traveling, we have like a two per month mm-hmm. traveling arrangement mm-hmm. right now, and that's still a lot for her. Mm-hmm. Where like I try not to travel out of town twice a month, mm-hmm. and then I also have a job um, that allows me to practice and use my gifts within my work okay, atmosphere good, good, yeah. so that helps to ease some of that there tension as well still getting to travel and, mm-hmm. and share my music and things like that so it's just being creative with how yeah. you do it and knowing that you know if it ain't really paying the bills paying the mm-hmm. bills you cannot just justify mm-hmm. being gone being gone yeah, like yeah, if, yep. if it were a thing where i was making 100k a hundred k year and it was like this is definitely paying the bills mm-hmm. and my wife can cut back part time and yeah. things like that. Then it's a whole different story. Then mm-hmm. you you cross those those bridges when you get there. But if if it's a situation where you're making, you know, fifteen, twenty thousand mm-hmm. and you struggling to make ends meet, mm-hmm. it's like you can't really justify demanding, yeah. you know. So it's just you know, taking it with strides. Yeah. So I think it's a multifaceted answer to say yeah. the least. It's a lot of little nuance with it, but just being honest with mm-hmm. with you and your, your your partner. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Every every dynamic is completely different. Yep. And even this week, uh, the last couple of weeks, there were a few things that I had to like shut down to really focus in uh-huh. on the specific things that God is calling me to do, like some opportunities or just little, little side things, like um, you know, I teach music. Yep. So there's some places. Uh, locally that will ask me to come and hey can you come in a substitute and all that stuff and I'm like oh yeah you know I definitely can I literally told them yes then I had to pull back and be like man you know what that's four to eight hours mm-hmm. that I could be investing yep. back into my businesses yep. or my business where I'm teaching you know mm-hmm. I could be shooting that video for that next YouTube lesson yeah, yeah. so I had to reach back and I, I told them I was like oh you know I'm sorry I actually can't and I think you may need to take me off the sub list completely yeah yeah I was like I gotta zero in I have to zero in the guy's really been um Pressing that on my heart, like is there's a ministry in saying no to things. Mm-hmm. You know, you can really focus in. So, so yeah, I, I like that thing that you said. As and far that's as hard, because mm-hmm. like you know, I'm not in my in my twenties. I could just run, 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 yeah. run. Yeah, I was 22 when I got married, so we were still mm-hmm. relatively young and mm-hmm. figuring things out. In your 30s is different. Yeah, like no. you both kind of know who you are now. Yeah. You got careers, yeah. um, and certain things that could have slid, mm-hmm. you know, early on. Mm-hmm. Like once you kind of know we ain't going nowhere, it's yeah. like, no, nah, I ain't having it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep, yep. So, oh man, you, you, you talking the truth a, now? Yeah, it's just a different situation. Yeah, it was a whole thing when we had um, our second boy. I mean, even with, okay, so when it was just Gabby and me, I mean, I would execute, execute, mm-hmm. knock stuff yeah. out. Then we had our first son, and still being able to, like, oh, this, this isn't so bad. After we had the second one, I was like, oh, man, how do I balance everything? You know, yeah. I'm, I like, you're you're still running and, like, mm-hmm. doing your thing and stuff, but then it's now, at like, a slower pace. And some people will take that and say, like, oh, you know, I have kids, I can't really do anything. But it's like, it's God, if God is calling you 
to do something, yeah. you can find that time to That's do right. that. You know? um, it may not and, be at the fullest of what... Yeah, and, and it's choosing your pockets, kind of like yeah. you're saying, like even, um, I think, early in my artistic career. So like I would say right now, if if I'm a an NBA player, like mm-hmm. I'm, I've stepped into my prime. Like mm-hmm. I can sit down without inspiration mm-hmm. or being, you know, wooed yep. by something and just write a song. Yep. And it'd be good. Mm-hmm. I can I can see the cadence and hear the melodies. Yeah. Like I've I've learned the craft in a way where it's not quote unquote fluky. Mm-hmm. Like I, I just mm-hmm. know how to do it now. So even with hearing you say that, it's mm-hmm. like like I know there are certain hours in the day where mm-hmm. I can be undivided and focus on my my craft or my art. Love it. Those are the times where you create. Yeah. Those are the go. times where you you book shows and get mm-hmm. in your pocket versus trying to, you know, there are times where you gotta say, babe, I need to pull it aside mm-hmm. and focus on this. Yeah. But you know, you don't want those to be every single night all mm-hmm. the time. Like, yeah. you know. Well, that's yeah. good. Now let's go back to your your creative process. <laughs> Yeah. So when you write these songs, how many how many albums have you dropped as of right now? Mm. Um, let me see. One, yeah. two. I want to say it's five albums. Yeah. Five or it's either four or five. I think it's five yeah. albums, and then you know, like EPs and mixtapes yeah. in between. Yeah. Yeah. And man, yeah. I, just, I just I just love them, dude. <laughs> I love them. Thank you, you know, you my so favorite, much. my favorite, obviously as a, as an instrumentalist, still is, dreaming, is still dreaming, yeah. bro. You the live stop. album, I love that it. Li- oh. I, I don't think people, a lot of people, some people really love it. Like yeah. I, I, I've had people tell me they love it, mm-hmm. and I. But I was listening to it the other day, and I called yeah. my producer FC. Yeah. FC on the beat, shout out. He made most of it. He made all of it actually. Yeah, FC the man. Um, and I said, FC, this is an amazing project. Yeah, so good. Like the layers of peeling back what was going on during the pandemic, personally, mm-hmm. and then socially, but then also the music. Mm-hmm. I felt like I was making my "What's Going On" yeah, moment. You yeah, know what I mean? Like yeah. it just felt like that, and it was just like it's one of them projects that if you just step away from what's common and popular mm-hmm. in music. And just really listen, mm-hmm. I feel like it's really time as yeah. music because the instrumentation is so amazing and the people who did the instrumentation mm-hmm. are the best at what they do. Yeah, yeah. Like they're traveling. Yeah. So it's just such I got blessed with such good yeah. music. It was, it was beautiful, dude. So, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna jump oh, in. I didn't get to live the way it yeah. should. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> no, no, dude. No, we, that, that album is gonna be killing it. Just watch. But we're gonna pull back. I gotta set first question because now I got a new question, but we're gonna go back to the first one. Mm-hmm. Your creative process. Yeah. So how does that go as far as you uh, writing? You put that right there. Either way. Okay. Yeah. Um, how does that go as far as you you putting these albums together, these records together? Like, mm-hmm. are there just, just different experiences in life yeah. that kind of bring those things to, to fruition? Mm-hmm. Um, do you start with a beat first and then the lyrics come or you get the lyrics and then you, you know, go into the beat? Like, what's, what's kind of like your process? You know? Yeah. Every season looks different. Mm-hmm. Um I typically I find myself starting to write in the uh midsummer mm-hmm. is when my heavy writing start uh-huh. happening. Mm-hmm. And then I'm usually releasing something in the fall. Okay, you that's have, typically yeah. my my dude, process. I, dude, me too. Like I, when I drop stuff, it's usually it's been in the fall. Like yeah, my, yeah. my record EP and stuff. It was uh, <laughs> almost yeah. gone. I love, and that's yeah. usually my busiest season of traveling too. Okay. Like I enjoy fall. Mm-hmm. You know, college circuits, mm-hmm. uh, different you know churches and bars and things like that. Just it's it's a time where it's slowing down, it's mm-hmm. cooling off, and people are actually sitting down. Mm-hmm. You know, wanting to be inside for mm-hmm. concerts and things. I mean, I do like festivals and stuff in the yeah. summer. Not the last three years, obviously, yeah, right, but right. <laughs> it did pick up a lot this year. So yeah. um, that's kind of like my rhythm. But mm-hmm. you know, what's crazy? The last couple years, mm-hmm. I found. Because now I know how to write it anytime. I'm mm-hmm. just writing all the time. Mm-hmm. Like it's just at least notes and things like that. So every project looks different with its its inception. Most of them have been testimonial in different places I am in life. Mm-hmm. Uh early in my career, you'd probably seen more of my theological thoughts about yeah. God and understanding the Bible and, you know, um, I think as I've continued to grow and probably when I was around twenty four Five ish, mm-hmm. twenty four, twenty five is when I started more reflecting on my myself, my personhood, yeah, yeah. and thinking a little deeper than just my theology yeah. and spewing it out. Mm-hmm. And then probably now in my thirties, it's just like I want to just be, I, I want to be creative, and mm-hmm. then find creative ways to share um, things that I hold dear mm-hmm. and think about, and philosophies and things like that. And so, like even with this new project, it's more of a story, and it's not mm-hmm. my story. Yeah. 
But like early on, I, I think as an MC, I, I would have thought like I had to tell my story. Or it had mm-hmm. to be something where people like identify with that with yeah. you. Where now I, I think I've grown in a way where I can I could detach. Yeah. Like I could I could sit down and write a love song about breaking up with someone or yeah. having my heart broke or Even being cheated story, on or right? cheating. Yeah, but yeah. I can emotionally go mm-hmm. there. I've that's learned dope. how to tune that. Yeah. And 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 um yeah, so I I think the inspiration just looks different depending that's, on what, what it is. You, you know it's funny how you how you mentioned that because that's that evolution as an artist, right? Yeah. A lot of times okay, so you're writing from this kind of like I'll say like the theological perspective mm-hmm. initially. So you kind of think of it, you know, like if you think of the Bible, right? Mm-hmm. You kind of look at like Old Testament essentially. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You kind of like Old Testament. <laughs> then you kind of go into like this realm of like, now I'm sharing my story relating and connecting with people is kind of like that kind of like mm-hmm. New Testament type of thing. Then, then I like how you, it's even evolving now where it's like, now I can relate to you. I kind of feel you. So it kind of goes with this like, oh, we're having yeah. this, this empathy. Then you got mm-hmm. the sympathetic component too. So it just like keeps evolving. And that's what people yeah. emote with when you Mm. can share your story because your audience can expand as well because initially if you're just kind of doing it from the theological side you can really only reach those in the church who kind of understand these words and what this kind of means or you can evangelize a little bit and they're kind of oh I'm kind of getting it but when you start hitting it to where like yo this is my story and how God brought me through it right now you can uh, really reach people and they like yeah, you get more of an, a bigger audience too. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. 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 yeah definitely. Mm-hmm. And I think rapping in um, a lot of non-Christian avenues really opened me up to that in my, mm-hmm. um, I want to say early 20s, like the 24, 25 mm-hmm. area mm-hmm. because era because. You know, I would do a song about losing my dad to cancer, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it would shut the bar down. Like, people yeah. would be coming up to me, I was like, yo, I identify with that, I just lost well, my aunt, or, you know, I'm, I'm going through that with, with my mom or my dad, and, like, we crying together. Yeah. It's just, it's just a different situation. Like, it's songs that I, I do now that I can't practice them, because mm-hmm. I'm weeping. Mm. And it shows I'm genuinely crying, yeah. and um, and it's not a part of the show. Like I don't know how to mm-hmm. force myself to cry or anything. Like right. I, yeah, not, right. I, I've never learned that. But <laughs> <Itinerary>. like, <laughs> right, cry, cry time. Here. Right, yeah. like some people they just know how to cry. Like mm-hmm. in some, you know, some shows I'm just I'm done. Like I'm I'm just yeah. through. And I think it just took me continuing to rub shoulders and being in places that were unchurched mm-hmm. and that were just. You know, people trying to figure it out just in their rawness. And uh, I mean, I think that's been my life before season. It wasn't. And um, and that has helped my music to grow. It's helped me to not care as much what people say. Just Mm -hmm. like, yo, it is what it is. If you ain't feeling it, keep it moving. Like, I'm a grown man, dog. Uh, Exactly, yeah. (laughs) Wow. Man, dude, I love that. Just like emoting with the audience and connecting with them in that way. Like that's yeah. that's what helps the, the fans mm-hmm. to just become these, these genuine, essentially family. <laughs> you know, you yeah. connect with these people. So yeah. that's why when you get the bigger shows, some people are like, oh, are they coming to town? And some people re- mm. remember how you made them feel. Mm. That's the main thing, dude. I love it. Yeah. Now, now uh, let's go real quick to the name. You know, because I know you mentioned your dad and I think uh, mm-hmm. there's like a connection there. So like, where'd the name come from? Like tell the my, show that, my real name, yeah, yeah, my yeah. name, yeah. yeah. So my dad uh, was born in Mississippi. Mm-hmm. Him and he, he had a brother named T W as well. Ah. and so we had two great uncles, C W and T W. Yeah, yeah. They gave it to my dad and his brother, and my dad named me C W. And go. my mom, I don't think she was letting him name my brother T W. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so is your first name literally just those letters? Just the two letters. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Now what is it? What does it mean though? Like I that's mean, like, it. I mean, maybe my great uncles had it stood for something that yeah. we just don't know. But my but dad and his brother is literally the initials on oh, my birth so certificate. Cool. It's two letters. Do I love it, bro? It's like yeah. I don't know. I ain't trying to, you know. I, I don't know what word I want to say. I ain't trying to brag or boast. It ain't nothing like that. But some people just be having unique names. Yeah, and you just feel like okay, this name is supposed to be something. You know, what I'm saying like CW. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I just feel like like Jewett is just different. Wait, it is. You know, it is. I, I think different. it's just is cool. Like these different names. Is it, is. It, yeah, it is. It yeah. is. Yep. So originally, when um, I started rapping, I went yeah. by uh, Dazil because I love the truth. Oh, and so okay. I went by Dazil. Yeah, yeah. And I was, was, it I was a very and then Z E A L. Yeah, because I was a very zealous person for my faith. Yeah. And so and then my dude who rapped with me his name was Intense so he's ill and Intense oh there we go Uh, but I was just super excited but then as I you know began to share more of me I was like I don't want Mm -hmm. um, and this is before rappers start using their real name again (laughs) Uh, I was like I just don't want a a facade I want Mm -hmm. it to be like people know me because Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be sharing what I'm sharing on records Mm -hmm. 
And uh, it was like this. I remember talking with a friend. I'm like, yo, I'm just struggling with do I keep my stage name or my real name? She's like, who cares? And yeah. I'm like, it's important yeah. being a dramatic artist. Yeah. And so eventually I just dropped it and was like, CW is my real name. Like, it's two letters. Like, mm. that's artist enough. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, so dope. What am I doing? Right. <laughs> so, like, <what's>, <laughs> and he, <laughs> he broke up with Intense. And that's right. Was, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. No, that's my, that's my guy. He, yeah. he's, a, he's a principal full time. Oh, so, no. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man, it's, right. Just different, different realms. That, you mm-hmm. know, different seasons. Guy puts people, exactly. puts people in. You know, that's right. That's dope, man. Okay, so you got some new stuff out. Just dropped yeah. out. It was your birthday this week. Happy birthday! Thank you. I yes, appreciate sir. that. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and then around the time you just dropped a new uh, record. So what's yeah. that? Yep. So the new uh, record is called Lion Legendary, mm-hmm. and um, it chronicles or it, it follows mm-hmm. the the career of a guy named Lion Star. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So he, um, you know, it begins with him telling his story of like from 1955 with his his grandfather coming to Chicago, mm-hmm. and then it chronic, and then his mom having him in the 80s and mm-hmm. going through crack era, all of that stuff. So he tells us that who he is, the first track, and then you step immediately into this radio interview. Mm-hmm. And so I, I take the listeners through this interview and situations yeah. he went through. That's it. An authentic interview with him. We in made there? no. So I play Lion Star. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then um, I got a couple couple homies who do radio and DJ yeah. and who were the hosts. So That's we created cool. a fictitious yeah. uh, radio station. I did some some fake voice that you are listening to. Yeah. You know all of that stuff. Oh, man. And um, we just wanted the listener to to be brought into a story. Mm. So my thought was like, how do I make this feel like, you know, like a, a novella, like a um, a drama, like mm. a a soap mm-hmm. opera yep, yep. and you the music is a backdrop like okay. maybe the music make your playlist and you're working out to it or yeah. um you know you playing it at parties or whatever but the music was meant to accentuate the conversations that are happening mm-hmm. and the situations and so part one is legendary mm-hmm. um i don't want to spoil the ending to the first okay. ep yeah, of course. Yeah. um well we could talk we definitely could talk about it i don't mm-hmm. i don't know where part two is going yet i'm okay, still cool. writing it I, mean, so I, just, I, just have already, you, I just gotta have you back on yeah, here when, yeah, when it's ready yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so at the end of the at the end of the project, you know, I, I think you kind of get left on a cliffhanger. You're yeah. wondering what's happening, oh, and that's very intentional. And um, so we got a lot of ideas and plans, but I, it's three part. It's a three part, wow. three parts to the story that I'm telling. Um, now, here. quick question: Is there a uh, there's a music video component? <clears throat> there will be some music videos. I okay. haven't haven't recorded those yet. Okay. We're actually talking about maybe doing a short film with it as well. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. So the biggest Man. thing is just finding a you know the right person who can commit the time and yeah. energy and is is passionate about the project because mm-hmm. I want it to feel like you watch in Atlanta or mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's a really good show that kind of abridges mm-hmm. part one and part two. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Dude, what happened crazy. in between type of situation. See, that's the thing with artists, man. It's like whenever we have an idea or a concept, it just keeps evolving. We're like, man, what's the next phase? Yeah. This? What's the next thing we could add on, you know? Yeah. So it's pretty dope. Um, so let me ask you. So it, it kind of goes back to that visionary piece. Mm-hmm. So I feel like we're visionaries, you know? But I was actually talking to, I just started going to a counselor, okay. which has been amazing yeah, <laughs> you know being able it. to yeah man just being able to just talk about these different things mm-hmm. but something he he wanted me to do in one of our meetings was to talk about like if we didn't have any job or profession and we strip it down to these are the three things that describe us mm-hmm. like outside of anything like this can't be taken away from me this is who i am what would those be so for example it was like you know um my name is duet i'm a visionary mm-hmm. motivator and teacher Mm. Like those, like my main three things. So with you, I wonder what do you feel like would be like your main core of who CW is? Yeah, um, a man of faith. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think I, I think my faith would always find a way through. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> believe in something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, helper. Mm. I, I love helping people mm-hmm. sometimes to my own detriment. Mm. And um, oh, man, we could do a whole episode on that. I know. <laughs> oh my goodness. I know. Yeah. <laughs> And then I would probably say uh, leader. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I'm. I find myself in in leadership opportunities and yep. helping guide people mm-hmm. and even following people, knowing uh, when to follow. Yeah, so yeah. I think good. that's a big part of being a leader as well. Wow. Yeah, that's good. yeah, man, that's good. That's something you, you got to teach me on that one. <laughs> you got to teach me on that one because you know uh, sometimes you can be in different positions, mm-hmm. and then when you're in in the opposite role, yep. you'd be like. 
you know, I could do that and stuff. But mm-hmm. like you said, oh, that's where you got like, if you stay in your lane, dude, it just all goes back to scripture, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. God is like, I gave you this role. You're this specific body part. Do your function, do yep. your role, you know, because yep. when you start going over here, you're going to wear yourself out. Mm-hmm. You're going to make stuff shift and just just mess up, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of just like staying in your role, like that's so significant, you know? Yeah, it, yeah. it is huge. And, mm-hmm. you know, one thing that I've learned most, I've always said I want to be a leader like Jesus. Mm-hmm. Not the dying on the cross part, but, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> but the, the, you know, like when you read uh, the Gospels, you yeah. get an inclination that his guys enjoy following mm-hmm. him. Like mm-hmm. they wanted to follow him, mm-hmm. but he didn't need to yell i'm the leader or Mm. i'm the messiah you know what i mean like he wasn't that type of leader he said it when it needed to be said but he was more so like you know follow me he was their friend Mm -hmm. i call you friends Mm -hmm. and that's what i've always strived for with whatever you know i'm called to lead whether it be a ministry or a band or whatever the case may be it's just like i want people to enjoy being led by me um where i don't have to scream it all the time Mm -hmm. or remind people you've been around those leaders who Mm -hmm. are like so like insecure in their leadership Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. probably because they shouldn't be there but then Mm -hmm. also where they have to continue to remind you yeah, you could do it as long as I say you can do right, it. Right, as long right. as I give you permission versus yeah. like allowing you to fall on your butt. Yeah. Um, joking with you, you know, creating an atmosphere where you feel like mm-hmm. you are just as much as a leader as them. Mm-hmm. And um and they empower you to just be great. And yeah. that's what I strive to be. Like that's I want right to be there. that type of guy. Empowering them to be great. And that does take moments where Allowing them to fall mm-hmm. or allowing the situation for there to be a mess up. Like, oh, it's okay. Yeah. Now, what do we learn from it? And I learn from them. Yeah. I learn from the, the different people I lead. They teach me new stuff all the time, mm-hmm. and I'm excited about that. Love it. Yeah. Man, that's so dope, dude. Okay, bro. So, you are, first of all, you're our first, we just started this podcast. Okay. You're our first guest. On the podcast, so this is super exciting. Hey, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, man. It's leading awesome. Leading the way. Yeah, there we go. Just talk about leading right there. There we go. And then, dude, so like also, um, you're going to be at the next Creative Encounter yeah, that we're having. Yeah. yeah. So from the recording of this episode, uh, October 22nd, Saturday, October 22nd at the Nightlight Cafe mm-hmm. in Berwyn, Illinois, C-Dub will be performing 7 p.m. Yeah. Uh, again, Creative Encounter, I spoke about it on the first episode, but Creative Encounter is a podcast, but it's also a monthly hub that we do for kingdom creatives to be able to share their gifts. My whole thing is original music. Like, it's okay, mm-hmm. you know, some people have asked, okay, I do covers and stuff. I usually want it to be original so that you can really um, just share your gift, what God has given yep. you. That's my thing. So c will be doing his original music. It's going to be dope. And um, yeah, it's free to the artists coming out. It's free to those who come out. Again, we are a nonprofit. We are under ACT International. So uh, donations and everything mm-hmm. will support the ministry so we can continue to do this, mm-hmm. so we can do the in-person meetings and events and everything and utilize the space and you know all those different things that go into you know budgeting for these events. Yeah. But uh, if you want to partner with us, that would be amazing we would absolutely love that again the link for the giving and all those things will be in the description and all of that mm-hmm. but uh going back a little bit how do you yeah. uh how do you feel about being on stage and coming out to creative encounter man I, i'm super excited man yeah. this has been a, a good busy month yeah, of good. doing music i'll be at ball state this week mm-hmm. um oh, nice. for a concert at the college so yeah. I'm, I'm super excited about that and then creative encounter mm-hmm. the following week and mm-hmm. and then i have uh well Two weeks from now, mm-hmm. and and then I have some stuff in between. Mm-hmm. So I'm just excited to share some of the new music mm-hmm. and finally get to do music again. Yeah. It's just been, it your know, pandemic was lonely, bro. Lonely. Like online shows are cool, but they're yeah. lonely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love feeling people and being there with them. You know. Yeah, I actually want to sit there for a second. Yeah. Um, because I remember at the show we played, mm-hmm. you were expressing your heart on, um, how you were feeling with the uh, Still Dreaming album. Yeah. Uh, how you were just like, man, I don't know if this is if this is it or like what the next phase, what the next season mm-hmm. will be. Um, I know a lot of people during this pandemic, the last couple of years, have been <laughs> feeling those same things. Can you kind of express, um, be a little vulnerable with how you're feeling during mm-hmm. that season, um, and maybe how God just flipped the script or how yeah. you feel up to this point? Yeah, I, just uh, it was a lot of emotions during the pandemic. So you had I'm working in. The Woodlawn community on the south side. Mm -hmm. So I live in South Shore, so I live right there. And um, I'm literally watching people riot. Like Mm -hmm. I'm watching them tear the grates off of the cell phone Mm -hmm. shop and burn the wig store down and take stuff. Um, While raising a two-year-old, a one-year-old in the midst of the pandemic, Mm -hmm. um, we passed out over 200 
baskets of food every mm-hmm. Thursday. We were mm-hmm. we have never been a uh, organization that did like food pantries and things mm-hmm. like that, mm-hmm. but we had to out of necessity because people needed help. Mm-hmm. I watched two hundred go an hour. Yeah, uh, we were giving out gift cards for people to get groceries and to pay bills. And, Mm -hmm. you know, there was an ordinance where you couldn't evict people Mm -hmm. during the pandemic, Mm -hmm. but yet landlords were evicting people when we were buying people hotel rooms. So it was just like, ain't kids are at home, but they don't have internet and they got to do schoolwork and zoom. It, It was just like so much mentally and emotionally, on top of having a newborn, barely Mm -hmm. getting sleep, Mm -hmm. gaining 30 pounds. Mm -hmm. And, um, and just not being all my shows were canceled. Mm-hmm. No opportunity to do what I love to do. So I joined a, a, a small record label out of Atlanta called Build Your Own Dreams. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Got to be a part of the investment team with that, as well as yeah. help start it as the operations manager. Yeah. And that was really a beautiful season for me just to be around other people who were a part of the industry and creatives who were trying to figure it out as mm-hmm. well. So we were a pandemic label. Mm-hmm. We did very well. But there was even tension in that in watching some of our successful artists have hundreds and thousands of listeners. Mm-hmm. And you sitting there like, I am an artist, but yeah. I can't be an artist yeah. right now. And yeah. it just... It just was a lot. Mm-hmm. And and so when I wrote Still Dreaming, um, I'm sobbing, writing a lot of it. And um, it just was reflective of the season I was in. Friends was a song talking through mm-hmm. friendships, the ones we agree with and disagree with yeah. in the midst of political tensions, as well mm-hmm. as those who um, you just are not allowed to be around because of the virus mm-hmm. or those who don't check up on you, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the shallow, think about the shallow things in your friendship, mm-hmm. but not the deep things. Yeah. Um, just um, a, a lot of different tensions that came along with the project and the different songs. Mm-hmm. So they all speak to different issues and yeah. things. Still dreaming is like God showing me um, you're not like your dreams aren't done. They're just being reiterated. Mm. You're still dreaming. It just looks different. Uh, yes, you have a baby and you can't travel the same mm-hmm. way. And yes, there's a, a virus that keeps you from really doing what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Yes, you are watching poverty and riots and mm-hmm. the death of George Floyd and mm-hmm. your assault on blackness and the Capitol riots but you are still dreaming. Mm -hmm. What would that look like? And God was just showing me. So I I literally thought it was my last project. Mm. I thought it was it. I thought settle in to build your own dreams as the operations manager. Mm -hmm. I'll just be behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And that was it. And, um, but my writing got better. (laughs) My artistic ability got better. I lost 30 pounds. Mm -hmm. Everything just showed me this is not it. Actually, Mm -hmm. it's just starting to rev up to where you thought it would be during the pandemic. Yeah. And uh, th- there was this shift. Yep. I feel like that's a theme on this on this uh, podcast is there was this shift that God took you through. Like, mm-hmm. And he's taken a lot of us through. He met me, yeah. Um, oh, man. For I sure. I love it, man. We're going to be talking more on that on uh, future episodes, but um, mm-hmm. there's this whole shifting thing that Gabby and I, uh, Gabby's my wife, mm-hmm. uh, Gabby and I have been talking through, and, and we're seeing that stuff manifest even right now yeah. you know, as we're speaking. So. Man, it's beautiful, man. Look, my my time at the fire pit with my wine and cigars, that was some intimate yeah. times with yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Real time, bro. Man. We were talking, uh-huh. talking, and it was mm-hmm. it was good. It was it was rich. It was it was it was tough. It was it was just beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, dude, I love it. Okay, cool. So you got to tell everybody where we can find your music. Mm-hmm. You know what you're up to. You know, let everybody know where to go. While we got them right here, let us know. Yeah, uh, all of my handles are uh, the C W Allen, the C W Allen, T H E C W Allen, and um, that's my website as well, the C W Allen dot com. I'll be doing some stuff here regionally in the next month, and mm-hmm. then hopefully I'll be doing some more stuff later in the winter that we're currently booking and, and trying yeah. to lock in right now. Love it. Yeah, 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 man, dude. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, out. Yeah, man. Thank man. you. It's yes. my pleasure, bro. Yeah, this is yeah, dope. Definitely. Hey guys, make sure you go follow C Dub again. In about a week, he will be at the Creative Encounter in Berwyn, Illinois. It's going to be an amazing time playing original music, hip hop. If you are into hip hop, come on out. And also, if you want to perform at the next Creative Encounter, make sure to hit the link below to fill out the survey. We'll get your information so that you guys can uh, share your creative gift that God has given you. We are super excited. Again, if you want to partner with us, you're going to go to the Giving Fuel link below to partner with this ministry. Mm -hmm. And again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Yeah, yeah, let's get it. (laughs) 